Today, we're going to look at Luminar 4 as a possible replacement to Adobe Lightroom. It's inexpensive and free of subscription cost. Let's go. What's up everybody, Phil with Photo Gear Fun here today in our continuing series on ditching Lightroom. I wanted to show you a possible alternative called Luminar 4. I'll run you through the basic interface and then we'll walk into kind of a quick workflow and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So you can see it's a similar interface. You can add folders, you can have different looks. You can see, you can turn the looks on or off and we'll talk more about looks later. Here's your view, you can change your view. You can zoom in and you can zoom out. You can also do a, a before and after look, which we'll get into. I'll show you a little bit about that. You can crop, you can export to email or smug mug. And there are two different views. You can look at the gallery view and then the single view, which I have here. Different modules, library module where you can see things. And then your edit module where you can go through and edit. You can see a bunch of different essentials. And then there's information about, you'll see a histogram and information about the file. And we can look at different pieces here. We have the layers canvases, the essentials, you've got creative, and we'll get into some of these, portrait, then there's the professional, and these are all different views. You can also see your history, and you can do some other things, but I wanted to show you this kind of quick workflow, and just how quick and easy it can be. So I've got this picture here of a warbler that I want to edit. I can go down here to the looks, click on this first look, which is the AI look, and it will enhance the photo the way that it thinks it should. And it does a pretty darn good job. And you can look at the, the before and after, and you'll see what happened on the right-hand side. You can see kind of what it's done. Anything that is white, it's made changes there. So you can see those three changes that it's made or changes in those three. You can also change the opacity of this particular look. So if that's too strong, I think it is for this one, I'll bring it down to 59 or 60. I like that. I think it looks pretty good. The bird looks good. I'm really focusing on the bird in this one. So I want to go ahead and crop this and see if I can finish this off fairly quickly. So I'll go ahead and select my crop area. I want to get as few distractions as possible in this crop. Looking at the bottom, you can see just a little bit of a distraction and over in the corner. And we're going to take care of those and I'll show you how it's very quick and very easy. So that's the basic crop that I want. Now I really just want to get rid of those distractions. You can see the bird looks pretty good, but you have those couple of distractions there. So if you go back into the canvas section, there is this beautiful erase tool. I just love this tool. So you can click on erase and it will basically prepare it, get it ready. And then you can select what you want to erase. And you can control the size of your brush by your bracket keys, but basically you just want as small a brush as you need to get the job done and just select the areas that you want to erase, nothing more. So if you carefully select them, you can see I've got these two areas selected here. You can see that I'm subtracting and you can change different variables, but you can also just, when you're done, tap on done. And then by the magic of AI and this great software, you can see that it's erasing those and that is an amazing result. Look and zoom in, you can see that really it just did a tremendous job, especially there at the bottom where it kind of reconstructed a part of that branch. So at this point, I'm pretty happy. I can go ahead and export it, or I can export it in a couple of ways, and then this is kind of exporting it if you just want to save it. And thanks for watching the video, that's it. I, actually, just kidding. But that is a, a quick way that you can edit an image, probably in under two minutes, but I'm gonna show you what my normal workflow would be. So I'm gonna look at some images here, or an image from my beautiful hometown. And I want to do a few things to this. So I'll go through kind of my standard workflow. There's some things that I'd like to change here. So if I click on the image, select it, go back into the edit module, I'm going to go into the essentials tab where I can change different things. So this is the exposure. This is a raw image, as you can see. So I can change the exposure. I want to bring those highlights down. Probably want to bring those shadows up a little bit, but this is very similar to, to Lightroom. And then there's this AI enhance, which will enhance everything based on this slider. So as you can see, it goes, it can go kind of crazy. So we'll turn it on and off. So there it is with it off. And there it is at 100% for the AI accent. You can also enhance the sky. It's very similar to the looks that we were seeing earlier. So here's the sky enhancement. We'll do something more with the sky, which is really this killer feature, but you can also edit the mask. And then there is some AI structure that you can add. So it gives contrast and sharpness and those different types of things. Kind of gives it that crunchy look, as you can see here. 
you can boost it. And again, you, with those sliders, you can control the amount. You can add the color, do a black and white conversion, detail enhancer. There's denoising, landscape enhancer. I'm going to go over here to creative, and I want to show you this killer feature, and that is the AI sky replacement. So I was out during the, the afternoon, but let's say that I wanted to make it look like I was out at sunset. I mean, a bunch of different skies that are, are included. I'm going to select this dramatic sunset one. And you can see it just replaced the sky literally with a click of a button. So there is before and here is with the sky replacement. And you can zoom in and see it does a really, really good job. Even you looking at the, the buildings, the edges, look at the trees. You can see that, you know, it didn't necessarily do a 100% great job. And you can go ahead and, and change different settings to try to make that look a little bit better, especially around the tree. And I won't get into that, but there are some sliders that you can see here that will help you kind of fine tune it and make sure that it's looking the way that you want to. So you can see I can change the the blending, which will help a little bit and, and change on the horizon where it's blending. Also, you can change the position of the sky. So if you don't like the position where it was, you can change that horizontal position. And again, there are some other things that you can do with the sky, but you can fine tune the sky and it looks really, really good. There's ways to refine it. So again, that's the normal and that's the sunset version. There are other things that you can do again here in this module as we go through. I really like to add a matte look to my images, landscape images or city images. So pretty simple to do here. You just slide that amount up and you can see it does a pretty good job of making it matte looking. And then you can also increase the fade. So this is with the fade all the way up. So you get that matte kind of faded look and you can add contrast back to it. You can remove contrast from it, but there is before and after, so before and then after. I think that does a pretty good job of giving you that matte look. Again, you can control it. You can change the masking. So with all of these features, you can change the mask. There's also some portrait stuff in here, which is amazing, but I don't shoot portraits, so I'm not going to cover that. There are some other videos out there that you can look at that will give you information about that. And then there's a pro section where you can do things like dodging and burning, enhancing colors, adding filters, and some split toning. You can also see your history, so what changes were made and what settings were made, and then you can just reset. So I'm going to go back here, and you can see that canvas Again, you have the erase and different things. Also, you can see that there's a layer, and now you have an opacity slider on that one layer. So there's just one layer in this image. If you had different limit, different layers, you could change that opacity, and that changes all the settings that you've made on that layer. So you can see that it goes through and increases or decreases the effect. You can also go through and use different looks here. So black and white might be good for a cityscape. Um, and then from that, you can go back into any of these other modules once you have that look applied. And, you know, you might want to add some contrast, some advanced contrast. You might want to go and do some dodging and burning. So you can highlight, you can raise the highlights, lower the shadows, do those types of things and, and make it look exactly like you want to look. So I hope you enjoyed that really quick look at Luminar 4 as a possible replacement to Lightroom. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, please click on that bell icon. That will allow you to be notified when we go live or have a new video. Sorry for my voice, got a little cold. Get out there and have your photo gear fun. I will talk at you again in the next video.